All right, Kevin back with you for another episode of the Million Dollar Relationships Podcast. And today, I'm here with Igor Kafet. Igor, welcome. So awesome to have you on the show, man. Thank you. It's a great pleasure to be here. Yeah. And I, you know what? I've been really looking forward to this because you and I met, in, as I meet most people, and as I'm sure you meet a lot of people, uh, through a mutual friend. And in right. this particular instance, I don't know, about a month or so, our friend Joel Irway had made a, a, a post on Facebook. And, yep. and, and, and through that, you and I ended up connecting and stuff. And, and Joel yep. is just one of those guys. I mean, for one, uh, he's, an absolutely, he's an absolutely world class at doing what he does and helping people create an offer that just resonates with their people and stuff that gets those people to be like, Oh yeah, that is exactly what I want. And yes. <laughs> and that's kind of, you know, that's one of Joel's gifts and, and when, and, and what a testament to the power of relationships, which of course is what this podcast is all about and stuff. And so I just want to give that shout out to Joel and uh, cause you know, good things always come through when you when you get connections through mutual friends you know it's, it's funny because i don't even go on facebook these days uh, a, a long long time ago i read this book called deep work by cal okay. newport and the book makes an argument for getting off social media mm -hmm. or at least cutting it down by 80 percent because okay. it's not productive now of course there's exceptions for example for someone like you who's like a super connector spending time on facebook is probably part of the job but for for most people, I, I'd say um, spending time on social media is not essential. Plus, at one point, I noticed that it gives me a lot of anxiety and a lot of um, negative feelings because you get on Facebook, you scroll through your wall and it's like private jet this and I made a million dollars that and look at my perfect relationship and I'm super healthy. Look at my abs and I lost That's 40 awesome. kilograms all last BS, week. BS, Igor. <laughs> Dude, but it's like frustrating, you know, I end up feeling like a big fat broke stupid lonely loser even though i'm married rich successful and you know i feel pretty good so that's that's the sort of effect i get from from facebook uh most of the time but i'm not sure why i got on facebook that day and uh joel's post was up top uh apparently it got lots and lots and lots of comments and uh, he tagged in that post and he said you know you're the the connector you're the super connector relationship builder um and i'm i just learned um in the over the course of my if you will online career just how one relationship can be way more valuable than a product i created a sales letter i wrote a campaign i built or um, a tool i developed you know uh, truly relationships just again just one good relationship can can transform a business it can transform a life yeah. uh, I, I certainly owe a lot uh, to many of the people with whom I built relationship over the years you know both mentors and friends and partners and um, so yeah I, I immediately connected with your message like let's just put it this way so I decided to reach out to you and uh, connect with you directly and here we are here we are now doing an interview for the podcast and and I'll tell you you know um, it's interesting because when I launched this podcast two and a half years ago, posting a podcast was not even on my radar, not one bit, not at all. But yet my buddy Brad Costanzo made a really compelling case for why he felt I should do it. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that totally makes sense. And and when he said, Kevin, he said, you are the guy to host a podcast and talk with other entrepreneurs about their most valuable relationships. And I, as soon as he said that, I'm like, Oh man, that sounds awesome. And uh, and right from the get-go, this has been such an amazing experience and it has exponentially impacted everything that I was already doing. I mean, I, I look at how many amazing entrepreneurs I get connected with that if not for hosting this podcast, it never would have happened and stuff, you know. And so it's been such an amazing experience and uh We've, I think we've released like 261 episodes so far, and I'm looking to release a whole lot more episodes going forward and stuff. 
So what I, what I think we can do to start, Igor, is I want to turn it over to you so we can set a little bit of context, let the listeners know a little bit about who you are and what you're all about. So why don't you share, you know, you know what you do, who you serve, what inspires you most about the work you do and the impact you make in the world, Igor? You know, today I was um, actually uh, chatting with somebody who is going to be appearing on my show. Okay. Um, and um, this uh, woman, she um, she works with coaches and consultants. So when I got her on the phone, the first thing I noticed, she was like really just smiling, big, wide, really, you know, like Hollywood smile, just uh-huh. beautiful smile. And she she said that um, that she was like following me from afar, and that she considered me um, a mentor, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, even though I never, 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 ever connected with her directly. Apparently, she came across my stuff and maybe even bought some of my products, and I had no idea. Um, what I and, and she said something, something that, that triggered a, a nice, warm, fuzzy feeling inside. And that uh, she said that I have an incredible story. And... Although I don't consider my story to be all that incredible, to be fair, uh, it's a very similar story to most entrepreneurs. You start out poor and you work really hard and eventually you somehow you succeed and, you know, you try to make the, the best of it. Um, I am, what inspires me most is that I can just be me and that like helps people yeah. Yeah. because I can do me. I, I can't do many things like I'm a terrible dancer and I can't play the <laughs> piano, but, but you know what? I can do me. And apparently that people find it valuable. So being in the business of Igor, so to speak, and make a great living, be remote. As I've shared with you, I've recently relocated to a different country. Um, so all these possibilities and opportunities, um, all that inspires me. It's the ability to break the link between my income and my time. It's the, but it's also the, the opportunity, the incredible opportunity to connect with random people all across the world through the amazing technology that is the internet, yeah. which obviously it changed everything. Um, and and f- to have an impact by just being who I am. Yeah. I mean, that, that's pretty phenomenal. When you think about it, because when I was a kid, none of this stuff existed. But yet here you and I are right now across the world from each other, having a conversation just almost as if we're in the same room, thanks to technology and stuff. Yeah. And it's, it's pretty mind blowing when you think about it and stuff. And, you know, when uh, when Tesla, when Nikola Tesla first was writing his uh, doctorates and all of his papers, and he predicted this way back when. Right. He was saying that uh, one person would be able to send a, a letter and or a message of some sort and a, a person on the other end of the world would receive it instantly, for example. Right. So he, he was kind of describing email. Yeah. Um, yeah. This is and like magic. Isn't that amazing that we can do that and, and like with that little handheld device, communicate yeah. with people anywhere in the world. I mean, you really start thinking about it. It, it is, it's absolutely mind blowing, you know, <laughs> and what it takes to make all of that work, you know, it's phenomenal. We, we're, we're living in amazing times, you know. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. And I was uh, just discussing this uh, as well with, uh, with somebody today, just how fast things are changing. And uh, this person was expressing a concern that, you know, things are changing so fast that, what the what the world or the market or the you know anything will look like in five years from today and then i said you know that's i guess it's a good question but it's the sort of question that overwhelms the hell out of me because first of all i can't predict i mean i can sort of kind of try to guess but i'm probably going to be off uh, because if i could predict the future i'd be buying stocks and Sure, right. Quite successfully, which I haven't been. <laughs> um, but we could perhaps ask ourselves, what ain't going to change? Mm-hmm. What is not going to change in the next five years, 10 years, 15 years? And chances are 
our is that our um, our need in good relationships our desire to be connected our um the essence of how we communicate right that's not going to change we're still going to want to surround ourselves with good people we still would want to work with joint venture partners who can bring equal or greater value to the table yeah. we would still want to be connecting with like-minded individuals mm -hmm. so i think that part of it probably ain't going to change amen yes i, I think that part of it is going to become even more valuable as we continue moving forward and stuff. That's my personal belief is that, that just that real meaningful connection, not surface level BS stuff, but just real meaningful connection. Because, you know, when, I mean, especially for entrepreneurs, when there is that real meaningful connection and we just like somebody else for who they are, for, for 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 Igor being Igor, and when we just like somebody that way, and we also realize that they are just really great at what they do, well, it's really easy to do business from that place, you know. Mm -hmm. And so many so many people try to do business not having been at that place, and mm -hmm. it just kind of drags things down and it takes way longer, and, and it's because there's that lack of trust. In, in in character and in capability. And but when those two trusts are in place, when there's when there's trust in character and competence or capability, uh, now there's no friction and things just happen easily in flow from there and stuff, you know. And it's all about relationships. So um, you have a really amazing gift. And so I want you to talk, before we get into the relationship side of this conversation, I want you to talk a little bit about what you do and how you serve the people in your life. Yeah. Um, so what I do is I do e-farming. Okay. Um, e-farming is a hybrid model that combines email list building and affiliate marketing. Okay. So depending on the level of experience of our listeners today. I'm not sure if I should go into what any of those means, but in a nutshell, I teach people how to make money online. So I, I teach somebody who's an absolute beginner, who not a business owner necessarily, who's just working a day job they don't really like, or maybe they like the day job, but it's not paying enough, or maybe it's paying a lot, but it's limiting them because they can't travel. Or they're stuck in a cold place like Ohio because that's where the work is or something like that. And I teach them how to create an online source of income um, in order to break away from that if they choose to. So they can travel more, have more time you know, with their family, um, maybe afford that extra vacation you know, once or twice a year and so on and so forth. And a um, big part of how I teach this is show, showing how I do it and, and you know, showing how I kind of did it from, from the beginning and then worked my way up. Um, so that's my contribution. It's the, the journey I made uh, from working at a chemical facility, taking um, chemical showers at the end of the workday before they would let me go home because otherwise wow. you'd get cancer. Um, going from that and working a number of other really crappy jobs like security guard, boss boy at Burger King at the Dead Sea in Israel, uh, mopping floors in hotels like I did all of that in spite of having a very good education by the way wow. I have a degree in um, in electronics from the um, Air Force Israeli Air Force Academy in Beersheba so basically like I'm I mean I have good education uh -huh. but it's like I didn't really see myself fit into the 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 job you know world if you will, whatever you want to call it. So while working on my on online business, I um, did all kinds of crappy jobs. But it's good because as I was doing that, that's when I met my wife to be. Okay. Uh, so that was really that was a good side benefit. Uh -huh. um, yeah. And, um, and yeah, um, then once I became successful uh, through this model, I also decided to teach it. 
because people just kept asking me. First off, obviously, people who knew me, all of a sudden, they see me drive a really nice car, move to the better part of the city. One of them, no joke, one guy I used to work with, his name is Sammy. I was getting coffee one time, and I used to uh, love to work out of coffee shops. I don't do it as much today. I still try to do it every now and again, but I used to love to work out of coffee shops because I used to hate to be at home. Now I have a really good home office, so it kind of balances itself out. So um, he, he's been seeing me around town, and you know, and um, so we meet at this coffee shop. Just he randomly run into each other, okay. and he's like, Igor. What's up, man? I was like, what's up, Sammy? Yeah. So what are you, a drug dealer now? I was like, <laughs> I was like what? Excuse me? That's it's the like, default thing that comes. Yeah. You feel a drug now? <laughs> Obviously. I mean, there's no other explanation as to why I could be making a lot of money. It's I have to be a criminal. Um, so, yeah, that was, I mean... It's a joke, obviously he was joking, but you know, I have a, a, a good friend who loves to say in every joke, there is a bit of truth. Sure, sure. So, so you know, he was kind of hinting at that, but yeah, um, you know, the funny part is that I can't even explain to most people what I do. Like when I try to explain to quote unquote, offline people, oh, what I, I do, I, I it's I like rocket science to them. <laughs> Yeah, so at some point I started trying to come up with different versions of what I do. You know, sometimes I would tell people I fix computers. Other time I would say I build websites, even though I don't build websites. You know, and I, and I experimented with different models because um, every now and again I, I regret coming up with like a with like a story because people start asking me to do what I just told them that I do. Like if I say I build websites, they're like, oh, oh yeah, you know, uh, can you build me a website? I got this business. And then I was like, oh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I just walked right into that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can totally relate because, you know, my kids, and even my wife really doesn't fully under, I mean, they, you know, I work from home like you, Igor, and, and, uh, they see me in here in my office on the, on the zoom, you know? And so they just like, he's on zoom all day. He talk, he has conversations with people on zoom all the time, you know? And it, it could be like in this instance, we're doing an interview for the podcast. I also host these virtual round tables for like three or four entrepreneurs. I also have a lot, just lots of one-on-one -on -one conversations with other entrepreneurs and stuff. But in their mind, Ted just spends his whole day on Zoom, you know. <laughs> so, that's what they tell me. He spends time on Zoom. <laughs> and uh, and it's like, we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> so, um, okay. So now that we've got a little bit of context set here, I'm going to switch gears. And I'm really excited to see what comes from this. So I'm going I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to ask you the big question that I want to ask. And, and uh, so... Igor, have you ever been introduced to a person or persons that completely changed the course of your life or your business so much so that much of what you have today would not be possible if not for this person or persons? And Igor, I'm just really excited to hear your story and your experience around this topic of relationships. And so if we need to dig into that a little bit, then we, we can totally do that. But I just kind of want to free flow this and see where it goes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, I'm assuming we'll, we'll keep it in the context of my business, because obviously I can say, well, I got introduced to my wife through a guy that I used to work with in, in the hotel where I used to mop the floors and he used to be a bartender. So and um, my my wife was a sister. So we can I mean, we can do stuff like that or you know we can focus on just the business side of it or at least the personal development side of it or something else well so so and, and i love that because you know what we talk about our wives i'll tell you we my wife and i we just celebrated our 19th anniversary a couple months ago and i will tell you i would not be where i am at business wise if i didn't have that woman in my life I guarantee you I would because she is a big, huge part of the why I even do what I do and stuff. She is a mm -hmm. big inspiration for me, her and my kids. I, I got seven kids. And so, so, you know, yeah, we call it our, you know, it might say, oh, personal business, but you know what? It all ties in. It's all our life and stuff. And so I, I, I love 
that the first thing that came up for you as far as relationships was your wife. That's pretty awesome, man. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I don't feel exactly as strongly as you with regards to my wife's influence on my financial success. Okay. Um, but I, I, I agree that having her changed everything for me. In fact, I'll tell you a quick story. So I met her while I was going through a bit of a slump. Okay. Because I, I was at the time was like already a couple of years into trying to build my online business, but I was very unsuccessful at it. Um, I'm one of those who's like an overnight success years in the making where I had to struggle for many, many, many years before I've seen any progress at all. I fell into every shiny object. I tried every quote unquote hot method and technique and fad and everything else. Um, and after failing so many times, I ran out of enthusiasm. I mean, my enthusiasm gas tank was like empty, no fumes, even just zero. And uh, I said, you know, to F with it. And uh, I just, you know, st stuck to my day job. And I stuck to my day job for about three months where I wouldn't even try to do anything for my business. I wouldn't check my social media. I wouldn't create any content. I wouldn't get on my blog, nothing. And it was during that period when I was just focused on working a crappy day job and going out with my friends when I... Um, a guy I used to work with introduced me to uh, my wife's brother okay. and uh, we kind of connected with him on the topic of uh, Robert Kiyosaki's uh, cash flow quadrant, okay. uh, the cash flow, uh, cash flow game, yeah. not, the, not the quadrant. So he had an, a, a, a computer uh, disc. D you know, remember those computer discs? I totally remember those. I totally so he had a... <laughs> He had a disc with that game, and so I went to his place to uh, to play it, and we kind of connected on that topic because I really wanted to to get rich. I really wanted to break out of the red race, and okay. I was really trying hard. And um, he struck me as a guy who said he wanted to get out of the red race, but never really did anything for it. Because while you know we both understood that you don't get out of the red race through traditional education, he actually wanted to graduate the university. And then, you know, even though Kiyosaki said that car is not not an investment, he bought a car and mm -hmm. said it was an investment because he would drive it to college. And, you know, he kind of didn't really, I was like, dude, you're not getting the message. Okay. <laughs> That's not what he's talking about. But anyway, so he used to work as a bartender in a hotel and I worked in the same hotel scrubbing floors. And so when we would go to work, we would drive the same on the same bus. Um, and one day, he showed up at the bus station with his sister. Now, I knew her from before. Like, I didn't know, know her. I, I didn't even know what her name was, but I, like, I've seen her around many, many times before. In fact, I've seen her um, about four years prior, but she didn't recognize me. We, we briefly chatted, but she forgot all about it because I was, like, chubby at the time, and then I lost a lot of weight. Okay. And so then he introduced us at the bus station and that, that was a life changing introduction, as you can imagine, because I mean, I, I was hot for her, like for, for years. Wow. Wow. I wasn't stalking her or anything, but uh, whenever I would see her, like I would, I would, I would be watching her. Uh -huh. And um, so, so now having a reason to talk to her, Mm -hmm. an excuse if you will that that was very convenient and so um you know we got on the bus and i sat next to her we chatted and then actually a few days later we were taking the bus back from work to our hometown we we sat you know sat together again and so it was just a very nice a very um romantic movie like um a development uh she she liked like i liked her very much and she, as it turns out, like liked me as well, or at least visually at least. And so uh, that relationship developed. And, and once we started dating, about a month into us dating, all of a sudden I had this incredible desire to get back into my online business. I don't know why. Was it because I wanted to provide for her? Because three weeks into the relationship, I already admitted, like I already came, 
came clean and said, I love her, I love you and everything. Almost spooked her, by the way. She she actually wanted to break up immediately after that. I <laughs> That was my biggest sales job, I think, to convince her not to. Um, but yeah, I, I, I had this incredible burst of energy and drive and motivation to get back into building my business. And wow. then it took another year before I finally made something, before okay. I finally made some money. Um, but maybe in that sense, that without having someone like her in my life, I really had no powerful reason to push hard, to withstand challenges, to continue in spite of falling on my face many, many times. Could be that. Hard to um, quantify for sure, but could be. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So when it comes to business, um, what is what is one of the relationships that immediately pops up for you there? It fits into the context that I mentioned in the question. Yeah. So one relationship that, that pops into my mind is one with somebody who started out as a student of mine who got okay. introduced to me. Um, and he actually almost begged me to take him on as a client, but I refused for a little while and then I agreed. He wasn't a remarkable student, but he did become a success story. And then he kind of laid low for some time. And then there was an opportunity uh, presented itself uh, to work together. I actually invited him to work with me or okay. for me at first, but then eventually he became um, someone who could no longer remain just like a, an employee. Mm -hmm. So that relationship developed and it, and it uh, moved through different stages and it continues to develop today. And that person, even though I met them um, after I made my first million, but I owe to them quite a lot. Okay. Um, in fact, there was one point, one inflection point in my business when we've encountered a major challenge. I don't want to go into too much detail what the challenge was because it would require me to get like technical. Okay. But the challenge was so massive that the building blocks of my online business at the time, they were like smashed to pieces. So my business came to a standstill. Wow. And this person, them being very smart, very creative person, you know, 10 times smarter, 10 times more creative than me. Um, this person came up with a solution and then had another friend of his who is also extremely smart, probably smarter than both me and this person I'm mentioning together. Um, very unique individual, high IQ, high creativity, high energy, just the guy is just blessed with so many attributes and talents, incredible individual. Um, he now works for the government, um, like at a very, very high level and does okay. some incredible things, has imp like has international impact, I, I'll say that. Okay. I can't really say any, anything else. Um, and so together they've developed this solution that not only saved my business at the time, but tripled the business within wow. the following 60 days. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And this, this was, I couldn't believe it. I just couldn't. And it was only, and that, that, that's, that's the impact of one relationship that I was reluctant to have. Yeah. 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 That's pretty powerful. That's pretty powerful right there to have that kind of a result <clears throat> in just a 60 day period as a result of one relationship. And, and you mentioned earlier, you know, that the, the right relationships, and I've experienced the same exact thing, the right relation. I mean, I have long believed that as entrepreneurs, our most valuable asset are relationships. Everything else stems from that. And, and the right relationships, man, I mean, they, they can be worth millions. And, and yeah. I, I get to be this, you know, my, my brain just naturally works where 
I'm talking with entrepreneurs about a problem or an opportunity they're working on or a challenge they're having. I just naturally default to who do I know that might be able to help with that? And, sure, yeah. and, and I get to make these connections and stuff. And man, you're so right that the right relationships and the right people coming together uh, are, can be incredibly valuable, not just in revenue wise, but even in impact wise too. And, and, you know, and, and of course, the bigger impact we make, that's what ends up as entrepreneurs, that's what leads to revenue is impact, you know, not, not the other way around. If we focus on impact, revenue becomes the natural and organic byproduct of that. Uh, we yeah. focus on revenue, we miss out a lot of times on the impact because we're too concerned about, I got to make a buck, you know, <laughs> we don't get to look at the big picture of like, how can I make a big impact and get compensated for my effort of doing that, which you're going to make way more doing that. And so does anything else come up for you, Igor? So, well, actually I want to circle back to this relationship. So you had this initial uh, thing that happened and, and what, what has been the long-term impact of that? I mean, what, what has happened since that initial thing. Since um, since that initial thing, relationship flourished and developed, um, and we went through a number of different projects. We went through a number of different life experiences. We have um, immigrated countries together. Um, we we kind of became very close friends, and as a result, it then morphed into investments made together. Uh, it it morphed into. Uh, different relationships so it's it's really hard for me like it's just kind of like you know uh, almost like uh have you remember do you remember this movie um inception oh yeah like, oh yeah a dream and a dream and a dream so it's kind of like that it's like a thing and a thing and a thing and a thing it's so intertwined and it's really hard to track uh but it's it's been one of the most uh valuable relationships in my life for sure yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think, you know, in my own life, you know, my introduction to direct response marketing, marketing was Joe Polish back in 1996 was when I met Joe. And, and I look at everything that's happened in my life since that time and, and how Joe, quite candidly, has connected me with a lot of people over the years. And that one relationship has been incredibly valuable over the last 28 years or so. And, uh, and, and, you know, now, uh, you know, in 28 years, we grow as a person, we become, uh, you know, more effective at doing whatever it is that we do. And, and the relationships become more valuable over time as people grow and evolve as well. And stuff. So what the relationship was worth years ago, it's worth far more today because of the growth that we've all experienced and stuff. And so, Igor, I really appreciate you taking the time to have this conversation and share some of your insight. Um, for anybody that's listening to this, and maybe, maybe they're kind of like, you know what, man, I'm really curious about some of the stuff that Igor shared about what he does and stuff. For anybody that's listening to this going, man, Kev, I really like Igor. I like how he shows up. And I'm, I'm curious to know more about what he does. Is there any websites, any resources we can share with us? Um, yes. But before I share that, okay. even though I'm, I'm a sucker for some self-promotion, before I share that, I want to share with you another relationship story that I just okay. realized I should tell. All right. So many moons ago, um, I had a coaching program where um, I was teaching people how to do a, an agency play. Okay. And um, I was... I was doing a sales call, interview slash sales call with a potential client. Okay. And this client is from a, a little Eastern European country called Moldova. It's located between Ukraine and Romania. They're famous for their wine um, and pretty much that's it. Yeah, they have incredible wine. Okay. Uh, you, you can drink it like water. It's just something incredible. Uh, so, th so this person, uh, they were explained to me why they wanted to get into, you know, this agency model. And, um, you know, I, I really felt like they'd be a great client. So this guy was coming off of um, 
uh, a stroke actually so basically he was a dj and a host uh, hosting events okay and uh i'm not sure exactly what happened there but but he had his um he had a, a stroke in a sense where his face if you imagine like a line across your face like this one side of his face all the muscles kind of dropped like they weren't you know what i mean so I one side of his face was normal and the other side of his face was like dropped yeah. kind of like lower um which prevented him from doing from hosting events naturally so he stuck to his djing job but that was enough to pay the bills and so he took interest in in other stuff and that conversation ended with him wanting to join my coaching program but not paying me to do that yet but also with me asking him what is like the ultimate thing that you want to accomplish something that if you were to accomplish it you'd know you've made it this was a success he said i really want to take my family to disney and um and he meant the disney world in france okay because that's the that's closer than flying to la or florida mm -hmm. for him and i said okay and how much money would that require he said 500 dollars would be enough to buy the disney world tickets and the hotel and the flights for the three of us um and i'm not sure why but i just had this urge to just give him that money and i and i said can you give me your paypal it's like sure here and i sent him 500 dollars on the spot i said whether or not you join the coaching program i really want you to take your family to disney world just because i think it's the right it's the great thing to do mm -hmm. now everything else that happened that day is a bit of a blur for me but i had a conversation with him recently about this and he said do you remember that i was crying and i said no no recollection of that at all so he ended up taking his family to disney world he was very happy he became a very successful student of mine today he's actually one of the coaches within my coaching program he's helping me coach people he's actually very good at that he's much better at coaching people than me i'm great at telling my story he's great at actually coaching um and he still lives in moldova and as i was sharing with you before we recorded um i kind of put my family in this situation with different um, visas and stuff uh, with our relocation that they had to uh, quickly leave the country where I'm staying right now because their visa was expiring. And guess where they went? Where'd they go? Yeah, where'd they go? Well, I'm, I'm, they went to France. No, they went to Moldova the little country between Romania and Ukraine and there and they stayed with this guy and his family wow wow so for the first 48 hours he took them in and uh they stayed so my wife two kids okay okay he's he's got a wife he's got two kids and a dog okay. and uh they stayed at their place he said it was an honor for him to uh to take my family in and he's been kind of caretaking i guess for my family for the past seven days wow. Um, wow they rented their bnb and everything but he's still like watching over them right yeah. if you will yeah. and what's incredible is that at the back then years ago when i was talking to that guy when i sent him the 500 bucks i had no idea that that relationship will kind of come yeah. back to, yeah. to 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 be so of, of so much value especially considering that for the last five years or so i haven't spoken to him yeah yeah like we were not in touch or anything but i guess what i'm trying to say with this story is that it's not it's not only that you can get an you know introduce to somebody who may become a very influential in your life at some point but it's also how the relationship starts has everything to do with what may happen within the framework of that relationship later yeah. because my spontaneous generosity towards this person um quite literally you know saved well it didn't save my family but it saved me a ton of money like 
I, ideally, I should have sent my family back to Canada, where I live. But that's like way more expensive. There would be far, far away from ah. me, seven hour time zone difference. And now there is 16 hour drive away or a two hour flight, maybe one and a half hour flight away. Um, not to mention that they're being well taken care of and actually enjoying their stay over there because my daughter wants a dog and he's got a dog. The food is really great in Romania. The wine's really in uh, Moldova. The wine is really great. So all in all, it worked out great. So what I'm saying is this, don't just seek relationships and introductions to people who can be uh, great friends, great partners, but also consider how you show up in that relationship from the very, yeah. very beginning. Yes. Because that can play a huge role in how that relationship develops. Because I can recall relationships where it didn't start out well between me and the other person. Not that, you know, we were mean to each other. It just, for whatever reason, there was no, you know, there wasn't I mean? there a was, real connection. There wasn't a real connection. But then a few years down the road, we would reconnect and then we would get the connection going. And that relationship would get would just go through a whole other to a whole other level like uh, my good friend uh, anthony mccarthy uh, for example from ireland i've known him for many years he's in the same sort of joint venture circuit as me and we sort of know the same people but we weren't close with him for up until maybe two years ago okay but then um we had a mutual interest we connected and then we connected on a level where he now calls me son. Mm. I mean, he's much older than me. He's probably your age. So he's got four boys, all grown up, all my age. Okay. And, but now I'm like a son to him. And he's like a, like a dad to me. And uh, we talk every day. We, we do both like business projects together as well as personal stuff. He helped me out financially in a tremendous sense. Helped me a whole lot. Recently, I helped him. Uh, because he ran into some trouble. So I immediately came, came, you know, showed up and said, if you need help, just let me know. Um, and he's very proud. So it wasn't easy to convince him to actually, you know, get help. But my point is this. I, I wouldn't like five years ago, seven years ago, I wouldn't say that my relationship with him would be influential or super meaningful in my life. But today it is. Yeah. So if you do have relationships um, that you can recall where things didn't start off well. Um, and it's been enough time because you can reset a relationship once enough time passes. You can't do it like within two days, but if you wait for six months to a year and re-engage the person, it's almost like you get a clean slate. Yeah. And do we have time for one more story? Absolutely. Absolutely. So here's how I learned this. Okay. But don't tell my wife. Okay. I, hope, I won't tell her. I hope, I hope she doesn't subscribe to your podcast. <laughs> Um, so there was this girl, her name is Layla and very nice girl, beautiful, very petite. And, uh, at the time I'm still a virgin. So, okay. I mean, is she alive? Does she have a heartbeat? Yeah. Okay. I'm in. So, but, but she was very beautiful, you know, long black hair, very slim. And just what happened that we connected at a workplace. When I used to work at Burger King, she came in to work as a cashier and I was a bus boy. So I'm like, the lowest on the food chain, right? And she's this angel-like entity at the cash register. <laughs> um, but what I had going for me is that she was a newcomer into the country, as was I. And we, we kind of connected on that basis. Okay. We went out on a date, and um, but it never really went anywhere. And she kind of disappeared. And I was, I was really upset about that. I, I still, I was kind of going through that phase, like, God, why me? Why don't I get like the good stuff in life and things like that? I was, you know, being a victim. And then, I don't know, six months, eight months, 12 months later, I just bump into her in, um, in the post office, I think, some sort of office. And I literally, I bump into her and her mom. And she's like, oh, hey, how you doing? And it's like, oh, hey. And she's like, w you know, what are you up to? I was like, I don't know, nothing, just working and, you know, just need to get the package going. It's like, yeah, why don't you call me? I was like, okay, sure. You still have 
number still the same. It's like, yeah, yeah, okay, cool. All of a sudden I'm realizing whatever has happened in the past is in the past and it's like a clean slate thing. So I give her a call, we go out on a date and we ended up dating briefly after that. Now, this taught me a big lesson and that is that even if initially things didn't work out, again, in the context of dating, if you wait enough time, you can get a chance to reset the relationship. And I've had the exact same experience in the joint venture context with people who I either known of, but it never really went anywhere or people with whom I've got off to a bad start. I remember I had this relationship go really, really bad with a JV partner. We had a project where I committed to co-create a product with him. And it was right around the time when I was moving from Israel to Canada. And I thought I can handle both immigration and this project and running my business. And I was wrong. Okay. So naturally I prioritized immigration and running my business and did not prioritize this project. And he counted on me and he, and I mean, he was right to take it personal. And he just told me to F off. I, I couldn't, I called him. I, I sent him gifts. I mean, I did everything that I, I apologized like, anything I could think of and I really felt the guilt of it too the burden was was there nothing three years later three years later I'm talking to somebody and this guy's name comes up and I say oh really how is he what is he up to and we get chatting and he's I don't know what he's up to but he's like doing well and and then I just decide to message him and I say, hey, bro, it's been a long time. I know we got off. You know, I, I really messed it up. I know. And if, if, you, if, you, if you don't want to talk to me, I understand. But if you do, I'd love to reconnect. You know, no agenda. We don't have to do any projects together. I just I would love to know what's up. And we reconnected. It was amazing. We spoke for like three hours on Zoom. Awesome. Turns out he got married. Turns out like... Um, he had left the industry, switched to a different niche market, does something that he's super passionate about, like just reconnected. Then based on this reconnection, he made an introduction that led to a promotion for me. Um, and we, I mean, we're still in touch. And in other words, like I was able, we were able to build it back up yeah. because we let time pass and time, you know, who said it? The time heals yeah. or something like that. It truly does. When it comes to relationships, it 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 does. Yeah, that is an awesome story and experience, Igor. That is really awesome. Um, I I just have a feeling that people listen to this. They're 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 going to really get a lot out of this, and I have a feeling that. Some of them are now thinking, you know what? I've got somebody like that in my life that we there's been a little bit of a falling out, but man, I'd love to reconnect with them. And I just want to put the challenge out. If you're kind of feeling that, then maybe it is, maybe it's now time to reconnect with them and stuff. And and maybe it's just perfect timing for you to reach back out and and just, you know, touch base with them. And uh and Igor, thank you so much, man. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking the time to share uh, some of your experiences around this topic of relationships because that that's been that really valuable stuff right there. So now let um, me my circle, pleasure. let me circle back now and 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 we'll we'll do this again and and so you know anybody that would like to. You know, find out more about you and what you know. What what are some websites? What are any resources we can share with them, Igor? Yeah, uh, sure. So, first off, you can uh, check out my website. Okay. It's just my name dot com. So IgorKafitz dot com. Uh, you can Google me, and you'll probably find it. You can also check out my book at Igor'sBook dot com. Okay. It's called List Building Lifestyle Confessions of an Email Millionaire. Um, a big part of that book is telling my story and um, a lot of, you know, many of the experiences I've had. And, um, you know, it's a great way to, like, get into my universe, if you will. 
Um, another thing you can do, you can check out my podcast under the same name, List Building Lifestyle Show. Okay. And it's on all the podcast platforms. And this is where I share my experiences. I tell more stories, um, a lot of it in the context of personal development and business and email marketing, list building, and lots of different stuff in between. Um, to, to wrap it up, um, I, I just want to share one more thing. And that's something that I've always found to be true in my life. Um, so I'm a great believer in the 80-20 rule. The Pareto Principle. I think it's the most one of the most incredible rules for life, and um, it comes to play. It plays out in every single area of our lives, uh, from the most trivial and insignificant to the most significant. Yeah. And one thing that I think is very trendy these days is to talk about happiness and how uh, most of us are really unhappy, and how there's you know, major anxiety going on. I mean, I come from uh, Canada. Canada is the most medicated country in the world. The most anxiety pills are sold in Canada. Like I did not Canada. know that. Wow. Yeah, it's a very, it's a very depressed country. Mm -hmm. So anyway, when it comes to happiness, uh, what I've learned about myself, and I've read a few studies on that, although I can't quote them because I just don't remember them, but um, the quality of your life or how happy you are will largely depend on your relationships. And I think that's an important takeaway because like these days you get on, you get on YouTube, you get on uh, Instagram, you get on any platform and uh, all the podcasts are about staying fit, building your business, making money, investing your money, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, there are some relationship podcasts devoted to their romantic relationships, to marriage. Um, I even seen this one guy has a podcast. He's a former pastor who used to date porn stars, who's now teaching business owners how to, um, you know, m have uh, great sex in their marriage or something like that. Like there's all kinds of stuff. But what I think doesn't get as much credit as it should is the skill of relationships with people in general the skill set of starting a relationship and building a strong relationship with somebody um, i think that doesn't get talked about a lot i think uh, we don't put a, a lot of emphasis into it either and i think the skill set of emotional intelligence in general is a big missed opportunity uh, because like even in schools i mean you have seven kids you've probably seen this there's a big emphasis on math and English and whatnot, but oh. not, 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 not a big emphasis on emotional intelligence. So, um, yeah, I guess I wanted to, to wrap it up with that and say that beyond business, beyond making money, beyond that sort of impact, you will also be so much happier as a human if you were to have even a few but meaningful juicy you know solid relationships yeah. uh, and that's a skill set worth investing time in beyond the gym beyond most skill sets that are you know considered to be valuable these days yeah amen amen i uh yeah i mean you when talking to me personally igor you are preaching to the choir man <laughs> oh, and uh, but I, I, I cannot emphasize that enough. And like I said earlier, you know, I, I firmly believe that as entrepreneurs, relationships are our most valuable asset. And, and, and I really hope that, you know, because uh, the goal has always been with this podcast is I just want other entrepreneurs, founders and CEOs to be inspired, hearing the stories and experiences of the people that we get to interview here so that they too, just place an intentional focus on creating more real, meaningful, rewarding, and profitable relationships in their own life. And, and eager, thanks to you, uh, we definitely delivered on that today. And uh, so thanks so much for taking the time to have this conversation. They really appreciate it, really appreciate you. And I'm excited to get this out there and share it with a lot of other entrepreneurs. So thank you, Igor. Thank you for the opportunity. Absolutely.